Aloha, and welcome to Books, 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 where we discuss reading and writing and everything in between and beyond. I'm your host, Dr. Rita Forsyth, coming to you from Maui on the Think Tech live streaming network, broadcasting from our studio in downtown Honolulu. Today's episode is Songwriting with the Grammy Award winner. Joining me from Maui is the Renaissance man, who many of you know as Uncle George. George Kahumoku is a multiple Grammy Award winner, Grammy Award winning songwriter, master Hawaiian slacky guitarist and author. George is a world traveling performer, teacher, artist, storyteller, writer, farmer, and entrepreneur. Welcome, George. Aloha, aloha from Kahakaloa. Thank you for having me, having me on your program. And I see those Grammys right behind you with shiny, yeah, we got shiny four. awards. We've been oh. seven times and we got four for Best Hawaiian Music. So there's a sum of the four of there. We got some uh, Nahokus and all kinds of Hawaiian Music Awards and all kinds of other stuff. That's, that's a Hall of Fame behind me. Yes, <laughs> wonderful. Well, we're so honored to have you on our show. Your dedication in teaching and promoting the Hawaiian way of life extends far beyond your music. So I hope to touch on a few of your many gifts today, but let's start with your slacky guitar. Can you tell us how you got started writing music and then perform a song for us? Okay, what happened is, uh, you know, I grew up in a musical family where at least uh, 26 cousins, so we all played instruments. And um, my, I would grow up with my great grandparents, my grandparents. And unfortunately, all of our dads uh, were working on an atomic bomb. So we were raised by our great grandparents. And when they died, my grandparents and, and, and so on down the line. So music was also in our family right across the, the sheet where we grew up was a place called Apukana Church. It's a United Church of Christ. So we sang all the hymns and everything all in Hawaiian. And we, we'd have this thing we call Ohana. We would sit in circles and um, you know share food and share blessings and share songs. So that's how I started. Yeah. So I went from a small place in Kona called uh, Kealia, and it's in the Ahupua of Kaimalino. And uh, that was my first song that I wrote uh, when I got back from the mainland. And it was on my album called The Peaceful Sea, which Kaimalino means the peaceful sea. So uh, that was the first song I wrote in Hawaiian. So. Um, are you ready to go there? You want to ask me another question? No, no, please play for us. Okay. <clears throat> I wrote this song with my great friend Kalani Maniki way back in 1977. <laughs> Sense of place, a song about a sense of place. 
That's the first song I wrote in Hawaiian. Oh, it's beautiful. Just I could listen to you all day. Uh, thank you. And uh, it, it, uh, I wrote many songs, but not all of them in Hawaiian. I wrote all kinds of other songs, you know, from the 60s and 70s. And yeah, it's crazy songs. <laughs> Oh, and, you know, I want to also talk about your writing because uh, you're legendary for talking story for your stories and uh, your uh, stories are often based kind of on that fine line between very traditional Hawaiian upbringing and a modern Western cultural values where you lived and were educated. Um, so you've written two very humorous books, uh, Hawaiian Life, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Uh, and you're, uh, one of our viewers wants to know, what inspired you to write your memoirs? Well, first of all, I taught Andrea's kids most of my life. And, um, you know, I started in an alternative school in Kona called Haleopono. Kona. And most of the kids uh, were, uh, kids were in, um, Either one 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 uh, foot in jail and the other one on the banana peel, ready to go to jail. So um, so uh, I would you know make up lessons from stories that I learned or did my life. Uh, and so each one of this sort of like it's up stable. He has a, a lesson in each little one. So I taught for over you know fifty years, and uh, so I would uh, write. So I actually wrote over forty stories. I have actually over forty books, but I haven't uh, finished it because I. It takes me time to do the drawings too. So that's the, that takes the time. Yeah, so I, I told my friend Paul Kindwise of these stories, he said we should write them down. So he, you know, everything gets filtered to him. So sometimes there's one, a story about a grandfather. There's actually three different grandfathers, but make them into one in the story, you know, stuff like that. So um, so that's how I, I started. I, I would I write really to, um, to teach lessons to the kids I was teaching. Each one has a little uh, Hawaiian value you know, attached to them, yeah. Because <laughs> you are a certified teacher, are you not? And you, you taught yeah. in many different places. Yeah, I, I actually uh, got my teacher's credential from in California College of Arts and Crafts in Oakland. I went to school there for six years. Uh, I got my bachelor's in four years, my fifth year. I think I got my master's in sculpture and printmaking uh, in my sixth year. So I was there from 68 to 74 over in um, over in uh in oakland and berkeley berkeley california yeah oh, talented and, and, hey, we, and how, yeah. how about i'm sorry how about uh, another song for us and maybe uh, a story about what this song is about huh okay uh i i written many songs a couple hundred of them but uh this next song actually i wrote for my niece at the time you know I, like i said i grew up with 26 cousins in the same household so I had a huge family. Unfortunately for me, by the time I was 27, I was diagnosed with, uh, you know, cancer, so I couldn't have any more kids. So I adopted a bunch. And this, I had a little niece before she was born. Her mom was, you know, in those days, gonna, you know, get an abortion. I, I, I told her, look, here I am trying to have all these kids, and you got one kid, so let me take care of it and everything like that. So we made an agreement. I went to the Lamont's classes with her, and when this baby was born, she was born on Valentine's Day. So we wanted to name her Aloha, but there's so many things named Aloha, like, you know, or at the time we had Aloha Airlines, then Aloha rent the car, Aloha. <laughs> so I went to my kupuna, who was my mentor at the time, and he did Kanaka Ole. And did you know that they're going to mint a, 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 a Hawaiian coin? The first in uh, uh, with Ati Ida Kanaka Ole's uh, uh, picture on it. So anyway, she mentored me and she said, I said, Andy, isn't the name with this more Aloha than just plain Aloha? She said, there's an old Hawaiian saying that goes, Kevalina, Akeloha. Needless to say, I, I, um, this baby was born. I held her in my, I caught her in my arms, and I should, the worst thing I ever did was to show her mom uh, her own baby, because when she, she popped a smile at her mom, and right there, my daughter turned back into my niece. Mama decided she's going to keep the baby. But I got to, uh, but I got to name her, and that's a song I wrote called Kevalina Akeloha. I wrote her. I wrote this song for Kevin Neal when she was only six weeks old. I was rocking there in the rocking chair. And this song and uh, the feeling came to me. A song called um, Kevalina Akilo, which means the soul, the essence of love.
She's only six months old. <laughs> beautiful song and a beautiful story behind it. Yeah, oh, that's the how the thing goes like that. Wow. You got anybody got any other questions? Oh, I should tell you what I was about Slacky guitar. Okay. Yeah, so you know, it was the Spanish cowboys who brought the guitars to Hawaii, and they brought not the guitars directly. They came to help the Hawaiians rope off the cattle on the Big Island of Hawaii. But then at night they'd share the music, the Spanish music, and that's something that the guitar on to play the bass. Then they had a six-string cat that they played the rhythm. And they had a four-string tenor guitar that played the lead. So it took three guitars to make the wonderful Spanish Marathi song. Uh, when the Hawaiians, they gave the gift of the, the issues to the Hawaiians, the Hawaiians remembered all of the playing, but they, they combined three guitars into one. They, were, they didn't learn the tuning, so the Hawaiians developed their own tunings by slacking the loosening the strings and open tuning as Slacky was born. And here's a uh, song written by the league, song called Moani Keala. See if you can figure out the bass, and the rhythm and the lead. This is a traditional song passed on to our family for generations to come. Bass rhythm and lead. Oh, Oh, <laughs> 
Now, is that okay. one of your is that one of your songs? No, that's a traditional song passed on to our family. It's written by one of the the Lee who wrote that song called uh, the the lingering fragrance, Moani Kiala, the fragrance of the leaf four seaweed coming up uh, across the way there. So it's uh, one of our family songs. So, you know okay. uh, that fragrance. I've been off island for a month. And I got back and I got on the airport and I smelled the air and the flowers and the, there's something about the air here in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. Way different. <laughs> Way different. Uh, yeah. Hey, and you've got a week long slack key guitar and ukulele workshop coming up, don't you? Yeah, we've been doing this at a workshop. Would have been 26 years, but because of COVID, it's, it's our 24th year that we, we, we've been doing it. Yeah, we, we teach ukulele, guitar, Hawaiian language. Um, songs our uh, songwriting we also teach hawaiian cuisine most everything comes from our farm that you know from our farms and uh and we also teach lay making and uh, uh hawaiian lauhala arts and crafts and sometimes we make top of it and also we do some artwork we do some print making off of the fish that we catch we also do the fishing we used to do hunting where they had to get away with that <laughs> so, but it's an all culture uh experience an immersion experience you know sounds wonderful uh, you talked about uh, a little bit about people who want to become songwriters. So I wanted to see what was your um, advice to them, to our viewers who aspire to become a songwriter. Well, I think the thing that you, yeah, about it is that you, you, number one, you have to have something to say or to tell. You know, you have to have a story. So, you know, and, and, uh, and, and a story that's, interest, that's interesting, interesting to you. And in Hawaiians, we have this thing, it's called the uh, huna, the secret. And, and uh, that's why if you're a kahu or kahuna for, uh, of uh, fishing, you hold the secrets of fishing. Same thing like I'm a school teacher, so I was a kahuna of teaching, you know? So we have the teach secrets of teaching. So, so what, what I, um, first thing I think, I think I, I'd, I'd ask a writer to you is number one, have a vision. Have a vision of what you want what to, you, what's important to you. And not only that, you got to be able to smell it, taste it, hear your vision, you know, uh, see your vision, and everything like that. That's from my tutu called the huna. And then once you can do that, then you can do. And then if you have a hard time creating a vision, well, go to the newspaper or magazines, cut out pictures, you know, so you can remember what you, you know, you, the vision you might have. It might be a house, a car, or, you know, a, or, or whatever it might be. So you can, but, but, but make sure that you can use all your senses the sense of smell, your sense of taste, and all of that to, you know, to uh, have your vision going. And then, then, and by all means, get out and write. You know, I, I try to write every, every day, you know, but I don't get to write every day. I probably write a lot once every other day. When I, but sometimes I get into writing, then I write for eight hours straight, but I write every day. Yeah, that's the secret to writing, isn't it? Yeah, uh, you got to get and here on Maui, we are so lucky that we can go to your live concerts. What are they, every Wednesday at the Nipili Kai Beach Resort? Yes, and we're gonna, we have another one this Saturday coming, a special one, but it's mostly every Wednesday. It starts at 6.30 and goes to 8.30. You can go to kahumoku.com to um, register, you know, um, uh, for, the, for, for our shows. And you can also register for a workshop. Coming up, yeah, June first to the eighth, yeah, yeah, and everyone yeah. listening yeah. in, yeah, um, yeah. If you want to better, though, this, the thing is get out there. And the other thing too, I'm trying to get back into drawing, you know. So it's really hard for me. So I'm trying to find the balance between farming, music, drawing, uh, doing artwork, and also trying to, you know, ranch and all the other stuff that I do, and, and, and stay alive, you know, like that. <laughs> Not enough hours in the day for all of your talents. Yeah. Can you play us another song? Okay, I don't know if you want to hear another uh, grand. Uh, here's a song I wrote uh, for Auntie Edith Kanaka Ole, and it's a song about uh, her favorite kind of varieties of kalo, for Carol. And uh, 
It says, uh, Eho oh, I, Iho. I like this one. I like this one. Yeah. Eho Iho Mai Ko Ono Okaina. And then, uh, pa, Napa, not Napa, Papa used this, my song as part of this thing. It's a, and then the, there's a variety called Ohia Pele. That's a smoke of Pele. And uh, then we go to other, and another one is called uh, Api. Now that Api Taro, Ati Taro, you should grate it, you know, the Taro, and it's Taro grated when it's raw, it's very itchy. Then you add coconut milk, then you squeeze them, and then you add um, honey oil, and then you bake it in the underground oven in an emo, which is surrounded by tea leaf. And then we get what, what we call Kululo in it. Going on, then there's a bird called Elipayo. The Elipayo bird is flying over the tarot fish to a crab, and it is so it's splattered thing. It looks like the tarot got some um, uh, Eli and another one called Kai Valley. Anyway, these are all the and the Lehua is the one most everybody, the uh, Lehua poet, she lives on a purple or the pink side. Then her favorite though is the variety called Manaula. Now, I have about 120 varieties of fruits and vegetables. I mean, just taro alone. So, this is one of my favorite, the yellow ulu. Tastes like ulu, smells like ulu. So, and I wrote a so, song I wrote for Kekuhi Kuhi is a Hawaiian name for Auntie Edith. Okay, so here you go. You ready? I I love that one. Oh man, there's so much more to talk about. We'll have to have you back again. Well, I want to. I wanted to talk about your farm, your farm to table cooking, your farm tours, your documentary, your seeds of aloha. Oh my gosh! So we got to have you back, and I want to say mahalo for gracing okay. us today. And can can we close with one more song? And I'll say I'll say aloha and mahalo again. Okay, we we we'll, we'll, we'll close with a song that I wrote for my granddaughter, Lili Naya. And I just wanted to say, too, we also have farm visits. You could go, go to kahumoko.com and check us out. And mahalo for, you know, having us over here, too. Anyway, here's a song that I wrote for my granddaughter, one of my 34 grandkids, a song called Lili Naya, with its soft tiny hair, tiny toes, tiny fingers, so wondrous, bright eyes, always searching, so pure and white, bringing the whole family together. Lili Naya. Oh, 
So that's that's a, uh, I, I adopted I between Nancy and I we have 15 kids one um she have a birth son and she has two from a previous marriage then we adopted 12 so 15 kids all together 34 grandkids so that's that's one of the songs I wrote for one of my grandkids Lily Nania and she now lives in Luxembourg <laughs> oh thank you so much for being here aloha Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.